Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So today, of course, it is the Winged Tazars. These guys have been a really long time coming. Um, oh, let's get rid of this stupid unit attire. I don't know why I find this really the most creepy unit attire in the game. <laughs> but of course, the Winged Tazars actually look pretty cool on their own. So maybe we should just run them without. But probably the most meta cavalry unit in the game at the moment. Um, they really are one of the most used cavalry units we see in battles. Um, probably the only thing that's sort of coming close to them at the moment for, for betterness, if that's even a word, is the armor galancers. But these guys have the unstoppable charge. It used to be these guys and the Keshigs, but obviously since the Keshig nerf came in, everyone is using the Winged Tazars, and you'll see them an awful lot in battle. And for good reason. They truly are a very, very good cavalry unit. Really not a lot that can stop them. You know, the only thing you need to worry about is Imperial Pike Guard and to some extent Fortabratios. But Fortabratios, you know, they're a very static unit. They take ages to reposition. They're very sort of a narrow block. Really, it's mostly Imperial Pike Guard you've got to be sort of afraid of. They're the ones who are going to be able to stop your uh, charge effectively. So what about the rest of the unit? What veterancy line, etc.? Well, there's pretty much only one way to go, and that's you want the charges can no longer be interrupted. So it's going to be the bottom line that you're going to be going for. It makes the unit reasonably good. They are obviously quite soft. 10,000 hit points obviously isn't bad, but defensively, you know, 560 piercing defense, 600 slashing defense. They're not like a monastic knight. You know, they're not going to be doing particularly great in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, they're slashing damage only a thousand, not really that great. They don't. They do a little bit of damage if you know pull them through a unit when they're coming back, but realistically they're all about that charge. Um, that's where their damage is. It's just basically a base um, a charge ability with a sixty second cooldown. So it's a fairly long cooldown to compare to some cavalry. So you do have to be careful about sort of picking and choosing your moment to charge. But it's a very long charge. Because they don't get um, interrupted, it means it basically pushes through everything, and it means it keeps going, even against sort of huge blocks of enemy units, this thing just goes straight through the center, and it really just flattens everything in its path, and that makes what, what makes them, you know, such a dominant unit. Um, obviously, quite expensive to maintain, you know, unit kits are going to be, what, 12,200, and of course, you've got to have some horses with you, for some reason, I've, I've not got any barbs left. But we'll obviously have to get some more. So yeah, costs quite a lot to maintain as a unit. If you've not got much bronze, you'll find your bronze is soon dwindling, kind of looking after these guys. Doctrine Rise, um, I'm perhaps going to be a little bit different to some that I managed to, from the F4 quests, I used my Epic Doctrine box to get the uh, Charge Doctrine. I kind of felt that Hazars were coming the dominant unit, and I knew at some point I wanted to do a video on them anyway. So it was actually a month or two ago I actually did it, but um, finally got around to doing this video. So yeah, the increased charge damage by 225. The, the, the base damage is probably the weakest point of the Hazars, so I felt that this was a really nice increase. So that they're much more likely to secure kills rather than just doing high damage to every unit. So yeah, for me, this increased charge damage was a really nice thing to be able to get, and it just makes them a super effective unit. Elsewise, I've just done the movement speed increase. Is it really necessary? Potentially not. 6%. It's not all that much of a base movement speed increase. Makes them a little bit quicker, but barely noticeable. Uh, piercing AP and piercing damage. The charge damage obviously scales off piercing. Um, yeah, it's probably not going to be tremendously effective, but it'll make a little bit of a nudge in the right direction. And of course, that little increased piercing defense to try and make them very slightly more resistant to enemy range damage. But anyway, I think we've probably talked enough. I don't want to go on a super long epic talk about these guys. So let's hop into a battle, see how we've been getting on, and see who we can flatten with our winged tazars. So for our first clip, we are on Sun City. Um, we have captured A, B, and C, and we're on to the final point. We've also captured that back supply, and I'm kind of looking for where I want to get my opportunity. But obviously, the bulk of the enemies are in the same place every time on this map. They're on this run. You know, down the bat at back, covering the main capture point. I could go from here, sort of round the side, and friendly onto the unit. But not only is there an awful lot of enemy ranged units, including muskets, and possibly some pavies, I'm not sure, but there's also quite likely to be enemy pikes in there. And realistically, 
what are the odds of me actually getting through and getting a clean charge down that line? Probably not really very good. So I'm thinking about trying to get down this side alley, round the back to the enemy spawn point, and then charge from sort of the side rear, where there's much less likely to be enemy any enemy pikes. There's a bit of a tongue twister. Any enemy pikes defending it. But as I'm looking at this side alley, unfortunately these pike militia are here. And, well, they're in my way. I could obviously charge through them, but then I'm going to be on a 60 second cooldown. You know, the hussars will flatten them with that issue, but is it really worth it? You know, I'm going for the big fish here. I want to get the, the main charge off, not a few pike militia. Just as I was thinking I'm going to have to try and deal with them, they actually get up a move and go to the point, which was perfect. So I'm now making my move. Unfortunately, these Armager Lancers turn up. Yeah. I didn't want to counter charge because I didn't want to use my charge. We take a few losses, but I'm pushing through. I'm just ignoring the enemies at this point. I'm trying to get my flank in. We get cleanly round the back, and I'm able to get round while they're not paying attention. And this is just crazy. The amount of kills we can get in that one charge, something like 110 kills, three heroes, something like that. And basically it wins us the game in one charge because the entire enemy team of range shields pikes everything there just gets killed in one as long as well along with a chunk of the enemy heroes and we're able to get the final capture in the point that's where hazards are ridiculous that's where they really excel in that sort of situation so kind of as i said at the start it's imperial pikes are the biggest threat to hazards but realistically you still hold all the cards it's just all about timing so i was harassing these imperial pikes and they had to use their advance or they activated their advance and so that means I'm now really free. They're no longer a threat to me. They can do what they like, but it doesn't really matter. They've, they've used their trump card, and I can now walk all over them. Get around the corner, line up, and they're, they're, they're a completely irrelevant unit now. And I think that's one of the problems why we see quite a lot, particularly from more experienced players, saying, you know, um, if you get flattened by hazards, it's your own fault. You're just a bad Imperial Pipe player. Well, yes, there's some truth to that, but realistically, as the Hazard player in this situation, I hold all the cards. You know, he has got one advance for five seconds, and we all know that as soon as he uses that, it's game over. That That's his one push that he's got. After that, you know, they don't stand a chance. I can easily flatten them uh, with my Winter's R's. So uh, it's very hard, I think, for Imperial Pipe players in that situation, particularly when they get caught a little bit in a situation with this enemy infantry as well, for them to realistically deal with that effectively. And kind of my experience of playing them so far has really backed that up. They really are such a lovely unit to use. I mean, you really can't go wrong. I can really understand why some more experienced play players just play them over and over and over. Because you're almost guaranteed a huge amount of kills. They really are. You just line them up, charge. They move quickly. And so long as you bring them out of cover so people don't know really that they're coming, then you can realistically always get these really high damage and charges off. And because the charge just continues through so effectively, they just clear so much of the enemy team. They just make some such an, a crazy effective unit. And I think it's this combination of factors that really enables them to be such a dominant unit, even that in the hands of fairly mediocre cavalry players like me. I mean, I make no sort of bones, I'm always more of an infantry player. And yet, even I find these are really enjoyable, sort of easy cavalry to use. And that's why I think we're seeing so many of them in battle at the moment. Because they are really one of the most meta cavalry units at the moment. But they certainly are fun to play, I can't deny that. I have really enjoyed using them. Um, I just think that maybe there's more a lack of suitable pike units to counter them. The only real thing is the um, Imperial Pikes. And I think it would be nice if, if a few other new units were brought in, maybe a tier five Pike unit or something like that, that could be a little bit more of an effective counter to them, rather than actually directly nerfing them, giving more opportunities for players to be able to counter them would be kind of cool. But other than that, they are an interesting unit, certainly a fun one to play, and certainly one that newer players should definitely be trying to unlock with their F4 quest um, Golden Era Signicolon box, because they're one that's going to stand you in good stead both in the sieges and in territory wars because they're certainly a very used unit over there as well but anyway that's all i've got time for today hopefully you've enjoyed the video uh, if you have do let me know what you think in the comments down below do subscribe to the channel for a lot more conqueror's blade content and i should see you guys all on the next video